Welcome back to the channel. My name is Delta. I'm an economist with over 20 years of investment experience. And on today's episode, I will share with you my idea for Apple acquiring Snapchat and how you could double your money if this happens. Facebook Meta just released their wearable AR glasses. And I'm pretty sure that Apple is shaking in their boots because they're so far behind. Only way they can catch up is if they acquire a company that's been investing in R&D in wearable AR glasses, which is Snapchat. Currently, Snapchat is quite undervalued relative to the technology they might possess that Apple needs. Today, we will explore possible acquisition, who might buy Snapchat, and why, and how I arrived at this line of logical reasoning, similar for how you invest in things that benefit from AI. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Delta. I'm an economist with over 20 years of investment experience, sharing my investment thought process with you to help you become financially independent like I have. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to stay up to date, latest investment ideas and analyses of companies and crypto. Stay until the end for your moment of Zen. Let's jump into it. Don't ask them, what do we know? What I forgot? It's better than whatever they remember. A lot of my investments start off as an idea or a narrative that has logical assumptions going through the sequence of logic and if then reasoning lets me arrive at an investable thesis or conclusion. I recently did this for Micron. If you watched one of my previous videos, the reason Micron is on my best of 2024 list is because AI is blowing up and everything in the AI stack is making more money. Now, obviously, NVIDIA is the biggest winner so far, making the GPUs as well as some of the software that trains AI. Then you have the companies that are buying all these GPUs that will use AI and make inference and make AI agents that will help consumers and help their bottom line. You got your Google, you got your Amazon, your Facebook, Apple, everybody's investing in AI, buying a ton of GPUs from NVIDIA. Now, how they use this AI, will it be profitable? That still remains to be seen. But if you look at all these, what they're called hyperscalers, they their return on investment is already going up. Their profits are up ever since they started investing in AI. So, so far, so good. The next logical domino in this AI sequence is you have your GPUs, you have your companies using these GPUs, but there's a critical infrastructure piece that's missing, which is memory. You need memory to store all the data that the AI will be trained on, and you need to store the data that the AI produces, the synthetic data or inference. Memory chips are a critical component that hasn't seen the crazy rise in their valuations yet because it is down the line. Now, after that, after memory, also is another component, which is energy. You need massive amount of electricity to power these data centers. So energy providers are also downstream beneficiaries of the AI boom. Because of this logical sequence, I've invested in Micron. Today, I bring you a next logical sequence of events, semi-AI related, which is augmented reality that Meta has pushed forward. As you know, Meta has been investing for years into their reality labs, the, the section of their company that makes the virtual reality glasses their Oculus. Recently, they announced that they've created 100 gram glasses that look a little thicker than these that are actual AR. They come with a bracelet, like something like this, that when you make a gesture on your hand, it reads the electrical signals in your muscles coming from your brain and knows what you want the computer to do. It has an AI built in it has cameras and it speaks into your ear. So you can tell the AI what to do. The AI sees what you see and it projects like a hologram onto your glasses. And then you have the bracelet to control what it does. This is likely going to be the next device that we use 
to interact with AI or computers. Using our eyes as the main input seems very natural because this is how we perceive the world. This is how we take in information. This is what we want the AI to also take in information. So visual and then project it into our screen. We've seen this in many sci-fi movies, something like this already existing. So if you clicked on this video, I'm guessing you've read the thumbnail and you know where I'm going with this. Since Facebook Meta has innovated to the next level of wearable augmented reality, Apple stands to lose should Meta win. Because Meta has to pay Apple and Google 30% fees in the Apple Store, they're losing a lot of money. So by them controlling the device and the operating system, they can disintermediate both Google and Apple out of the picture. If the next device is a wearable headset of some kind or glasses, then Meta is way ahead of everybody. We saw that Apple tried to catch up to Meta's headset by creating their Oculus version, whatever it's called, that was 10 times the cost of what Meta was producing. It was slightly better, but it wasn't 10 times better given how much it cost. The, the, way, <clears throat> the way technology works is you make a prototype and then you iterate on it until you can scale it so you can mass produce it at a cost effective way for consumers. And Meta is ahead of everyone. Now, only way that I see Apple catching up is if they purchase Snapchat, who has been investing in AR for over a decade. This has been their roadmap from start. Early in 2013, Facebook at the time tried to acquire Snapchat and the acquisition did not go through. I don't know if Snapchat refused the deal or if it was regulatory antitrust, but either way, what Meta did instead of Facebook at the time was just copy their stories. And instead of purchasing them for I don't know how many billions of dollars, they just copied their te technology. They did the same with TikTok, copying Reels. So Meta is really good at, if I can't buy you, I'll, I'll just copy you. Maybe Apple can do the same. But they're so far behind Meta that I think it would be in their interest to just buy Snapchat, which is valued at $18 billion currently. If they make an offer, it's called a tender offer, where you tell the shareholders, hey, right now Snapchat is $11 a share. We'll give you $22. We'll double your money. Sell us your company for $36. All the shareholders vote. And... It, it, then Apple can purchase it given the regulatory agencies allow it due to antitrust. Now, other hyperscalers might want to buy Snapchat because it's relatively cheap right now. They have uh, 800 million users and it, they're valued at 18 billion. At 18 billion and that many users, any of these large companies that want to get into the advertisement business and the augmented reality business, it's a really cheap buy, in my opinion, even a 36, even a 50. Elon bought Twitter for 40 something billion dollars. So this is half the price, not even right now. It's yeah, half the price of what Elon paid for Twitter that has, uh, I think, four times the users that Twitter has. And it has augmented reality technology they've been working on for like a decade. Whew, that was long winded. So who could buy Snapchat? Well, Meta could buy them, Google could buy them, Apple could buy them, Amazon, and maybe Tencent. If you are watching my uh, Dragon Portfolio series, you know that Tencent owns 12% of Snapchat already. If Apple was to buy Snapchat, they would have to make an offer where Tencent also says yes, because they're such a large shareholder, they can actually sway the acquisition. Uh, a few years ago, PayPal tried to buy Pinterest, uh, social media app for I think more than double the, the price and they and Pinterest shareholders voted against it. It would have been a good deal had they taken it because since then their the price of their stock went down by like 80%. It would have been a good sell. Now many acquisitions over the years have not gone through where it would have been either a good buy or a good sell. Uh, 
Google tried to sell themselves to Yahoo for like a million dollars. Here, here's, here's a sequence. Here's a literal historic lesson. In 1998, Yahoo refused to buy Google for $1 million, okay? Google went to Yahoo, said, hey, buy us. We've got this search engine thing happening. They're like, nah, too much. Fast forward four years later in 2002, Yahoo realizes their mistake and offers to buy Google for $3 billion. Google's like, nah, give us five. Yahoo's like, no. In 2008, Microsoft offers to buy Yahoo for $40 billion. Yahoo declines. In 2016, eight years later, Yahoo is sold to Verizon for only $4 billion, 10 times less. Big mistake by Yahoo. Little historic lesson in acquisitions. Sometimes it's good to take the deal. Seems like whenever you could buy somebody, even by overpaying, it's a good deal except for Yahoo. Yeah, Microsoft dodged the bullet there, right? Anyways, other than AR, Snapchat already is a social media that has almost a billion users. That would be an additional business line for any company that acquires them. Now, in my mind, it's either Apple or Amazon that could buy Snapchat where regulators would allow it because they don't have as large of a presence in either social media or advertisements. Now, Amazon does have advertising business and Apple, but they're relatively small to the grand scheme of other advertising businesses. There's no way that regulators would allow Google or Meta to buy Snapchat by any, any reasonable assumption that it would not trigger some antitrust lawsuit. Government is already trying to break up Google and Meta tried to acquire Snapchat and is already a leader. So this, this would be a concert. It's called, there's a concentration formula in antitrust law. Oh, my brain. I hated that class. There's something called the antitrust formula where it's fuzzy math and lawyers can uh, argue it either way that if you acquire a company, are you concentrating the industry into fewer hands where it's not competitive anymore? Meta and Google are definitely out of the picture, which leaves Amazon and Apple. I think Apple obviously is into devices and has the technical know-how how to scale device manufacturing and design and give it that Apple sleekness that they are the most likely to acquire Snapchat. Tencent is also another contender, but they already have 12% in Snapchat. If Snapchat you know, blows up, if it gets bought or succeeds, they're, they'll benefit from that. Also would face regulatory uncertainty because the U.S. is making laws to prevent foreign actors from owning social media or media companies. As far as wearable headsets, Meta does need a competitor. And I think if there is a legitimate competitor to what Meta is about to innovate on, which they have innovated on already, but will likely scale in the coming years, it's nice having a competitor because you got your Apple, you got your Samsung, and then you choose your device. There's always going to be trade-offs of design choices. Uh, obviously, Meta is already way ahead when it comes to wearable headsets. So in my opinion, Apple might get left behind because they're just focusing on phones. And many have argued that having a device in your hand like this is no longer going to be the way we interact, interact with information, the way we consume media. Because when you're at a dinner table with friends, are you going to be sitting, looking at your phone, checking your messages, or you're just going to have something pop up in front of your eye or tell it into your ear discreetly where nobody knows, where it's not doesn't seem as much of a distraction. Plus, everybody will have their best friend AI agent in their ear, helping them navigate the world like having an Einstein that's always helping you out. Let us quickly take a look at Snapchat's financials and what the stock is doing. Right now, $18.5 billion. I, I bought, I think, one share. I bought one share. $10 when I had this idea first. I will look to acquire more. Should you, my audience, agree with this thesis? Let me know what you think below. Do you think Snapchat is a likely acquisition by Apple? Do you think my line of reasoning makes sense for this thesis? The reason I'm making this video and putting this idea out there, yes, every if everybody agrees on this, I will have to buy Snapchat at a higher price 
than I could have. I could have bought it at 10. I could have bought it at 11. Maybe by the time everybody sees this video, it will be 12 or 15 because it will start the wheel of speculation. But if none of you agree that this is a likely thing to happen, maybe I shouldn't invest. Tell me what you think. Together, we're all sm smarter. So Snapchat statistics. Let's take a look quick. You know, we could have bought it as low as 14 billion in late 2023. It's been as high as 30 by the end. Wow, that's that was some fluctuation. Holy shit. I don't know what's going on with this company. Financials, they don't look good. Revenue is only $5 billion. Profit margin is terrible. They're just losing money. Negative earnings per share. They got some cash. They got some debt. They got more debt than cash. It is shorted by 7.5%. And uh, yeah, now looking great. But what they do have going for them is users. They have users, close to a billion, and they've invested heavily in R&D for augmented reality, which let's hope is worth the acquisition cost of at least this much, but maybe this much, you know, 18, maybe if they offer 30 or $40 billion, the shareholders have to say yes. I, I, I don't see them saying no to, hey, here's double your money. Okay, so here's a next level strategy, okay? When a company is being acquired, what happens is the price goes up to the offered price, but not quite, just slightly below. There's few percentage points of risk of it not happening and not going through. Usually, in my opinion, it's not worth holding it for those five or six percent because it might not happen for many reasons. Shareholders might say no. They might just be like 40 billion. No, we want 60. Maybe Apple goes, OK, here's 60. Regulators might say, no, you. this will be antitrust regulation, blah, blah, blah. You can't buy the company. And opportunity cost. That five times you might gain when the acquisition actually happens is not worth you having your money locked up in there. You already got the gain of almost 100%. So not taking the 95% gain, waiting for the extra 5% is not worth the risk of it not happening, first of all. If it doesn't happen, then it will go back down to $11, right? Maybe maybe a little higher, but it will go back down. Or you could have invested that money into something else that also could have gone up more than the 5% you would have gained. So my strategy is when the company is being acquired, as soon as it reaches that you know top price minus the risk of it not happening, I sell. I take my gains and I put it into something else. Sometimes the company gets acquired and that's free extra 5-10% that you could have gotten if you waited, but to me, usually not worth the risk. So if this ever happens, not saying that it will, just an idea, but if this does happen, I will most likely immediately sell whatever Snapchat stock or options I have. Next week, I will buy some options or stock. Actually, let's check out the options. So when I buy options, I usually like to buy something minimum six months out, but I prefer a year or two, which are called leaps. Right now, there are options for January of 2026, June of 2026, and January 2027. January 2027 gives us all of 2025 and all of 2026, more than two years for this to happen. In which time we hope there is an acquisition offer, but will the deal conclude by then? Probably not. So we would just take the gains if they ever happen as soon as they happen. So there is not a lot of option in these options. They seem a little expensive. Something that would be cheap. <sighs> yeah, 20 maybe. Maybe this one, 27 maybe, 50 cents. It's 11, no, they would offer $22. So here, yeah, yeah, it has to, doesn't look good, does not look good. They would have to offer a lot more for this to make sense. So the stock went up 4%, so on a day like this, options are more expensive 
Right now, I don't see any good deals because here at 15, the strike price is two, so it's 17. So the stock would have to go over 17 for you to be in the money. And if acquisition was happened today at 22, that's not much of a much of a room to run. Also, when there's an acquisition, it's kind of a ceiling price. So then option doesn't really have much more potential than what it is at at that point. Hmm. Yeah, my, buying the shares straight up might be the best option at this point. All right, there you have it. My idea about Apple acquiring Snapchat. Will it happen? I don't know. Just a thought I had. Tell me what you think. Do you think uh, Snapchat might be acquired by Amazon or Apple, perhaps? Uh, and do you think wearable glasses for augmented reality will become next ubiquitous device instead of our rectangular phones. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I get paid in likes and subscribes. Thank you for tuning in. As always, may the force of compound interest be with you. And here it is, your moment of zen. Streets ain't safe cause they ain't knowing the cold. Streets ain't safe cause they ain't knowing the cold. Your value system says you believe in sleep more than you believe in grinding. Your value system says you are a consumer and not a producer. And you're spending more money than you're making. Why? Because you're concerned, but you're, you're reading all the books and you're saying everything the books are saying. But those books are not in alignment with your values. And if you're going to go to the next level, your values are going to have to change. It's no line. Meditated till there's no mind. Decorate me with shine till I go blind. DDSM dominated it with no bind. Safe words don't stop. Both old don't go. No time. Proceed to the next level.